A quick re recap on where we are with respect to SAP ERP product line. I believe if I walk you through the product line over the years, this will give us a perspective on where we are compared to where it's all started. So starting from R2 in the early 70s into the R3 in the early 90s and then into the My SAP suite of products in 2004. Up until now, everything was pretty much the same with respect to the SAP application. And then SAP HANA as a database was introduced around 2011. And then SAP ECC was adaptable on HANA. Up until then, uh, ECC could run on multiple OSDB platforms. It still does. But then at, in uh, 2013, it was possible to run ECC on HANA on um, ECC on HANA. And with a particular EHP level, certain transactions could be uh, accessed using, using Fiori. And that was a very rich user experience, which the early users of SAP were not used to. And up until now, the basic product was either R3 or ECC. So, so even though we had multiple EHP levels of ECC, the product was still the same. Come 2015, there was a new uh, innovation of S4. What S4 brought in was a complete redesigned data structure and a lot of simplification of the business processes. And with, with S4, you, you, were, it was, you were able to run it either on the cloud or on the on-premise. And that's where we stand today as we see how we can get into the uh, S4 uh, product line and how the transformation is going to be. Just going to uh, migrating into S4 is only the beginning of the journey. What really is important is how you use S4 going forward. With SAP S4 HANA, organizations start to modernize core backend systems of record into agile systems of innovation that can quickly adapt to changes in technology, markets, customer needs, and business models. This can achieve only be achieved if you have a seamless integration of SAP S4 HANA in-memory database, which speeds analytical processing with open source applications such as Hadoop, Python, and R. S4 HANA offers a library of whitelisted APIs that can be seamlessly integrated with open source platforms. These APIs let organizations pull data from core ERP processes, apply machine learning and analytical algorithms to them, and they return data and decisions or tasks can be executed on the execution system itself. This helps manufacturers build intelligent solutions such as robotic processes, automation, predictive modeling to enable predictive maintenance, intelligent scheduling and optimization logic for efficient capacity planning. Just getting into S4 is not, not the end state. There's a lot more that can be done once you've gotten into S4. So by moving on to this intelligent ERP, wh why, what do you get? Primarily, you are empowering every employee to make faster, better decisions. You eliminate technology hurdles that create business challenges. You deploy the power of AI to differentiate your business model, and you redeploy limited resources towards customer value. And this definitely goes about to reduce the IT cost. So this next generation intelligent ERP, a traditional ERP was primarily just doing recording data, processing this data, and then reporting on the results. Whereas the intelligent ERP does a, does a lot more. What it primarily does is the way you enter data, how you get data into your transactional system could be through integration with IoT and how you leverage the business networks. And on the processing level, you have automation and you're able to streamline the business processes and you bring in machine learning algorithms as well. And on the reporting, you're able to do it real time and you have real time KPIs, which is available for all users. You have the, you're able to predict simulate and also do what if analysis. So this is what gives an edge to customers once they move into the S4.